Isaiah chapter 22, verse 22. I will place on his shoulder the key to the house of David. What he opens, no one can shut, and what he shuts, no one can open. Revelation chapter 3, verses 7 to 8. To the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write, These are the words of him who is holy and true, who holds the key of David. What he opens, no one can shut, and what he shuts, no one can open. I know your deeds. See, I place before you an open door that no one can shut. I know that you have little strength, yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. I had a very exciting prophetic experience recently. It was one of those rare moments when God spoke so clearly, leaving no room for any doubt that He was speaking. To add to the excitement, it is a good word. This fascinating prophetic experience happened over two days. In the early afternoon of the 22nd of April, it suddenly dawned on me that the following day was my 36th wedding anniversary. So I decided to text my wife to arrange for a dinner date. When I took out my mobile phone, I noticed that the time was 2.22 p.m. Then my eyes caught hold of the date at the bottom of the phone, 22nd April. I quickly took a screenshot showing the time 2.22 and the date 22nd April. The photo on my screenshot shows my granddaughter Zoe when she was much younger. I'm always excited to see the numbers 222 and 333 because I keep coming across these numbers in the last three years. On those days when it happened, I usually chance upon these numbers several times a day and for a few days. Sometimes, it continues for as long as a week. It is certainly uncanny. I usually see these numbers on car license plates when I'm driving and on my mobile phone. How often do you see 222 and 333 car plates on the road, one after another, within the same day? And then, when you pick up the phone, it is either 2.22 p.m. or 3.23 p.m. Besides, I do not come across the same series of other digits such as 777, 888 or 999. Once, at People's Park Hawker Centre, I was telling my wife about all these uncanny coincidences and my eyes caught hold of an old dirty tin can under a table. It had the number 222 printed boldly on it. Are all these occurrences coincidental? I don't think so. It happened too frequently to be just coincidences. Often, it happened when I was asking God some very challenging questions or when I needed some reassurance from Him regarding controversial matters. It also happened frequently when God was telling me something important. I've been seeking the Lord regarding the meaning of these numbers 222 and 333, but I do not have any concrete answer so far. The closest possible meaning of 333 is God's promise to the prophet Jeremiah in Jeremiah 33, 3, Call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things that you do not know. I say that because I've been asking God repeatedly for knowledge, understanding, wisdom and discernment in recent years at the back of so many controversial and potentially dystopian things happening around the world. Yet, I believe that Jeremiah 33.3 is only a small part of the answer. There is something more. Besides, the question of 222 remains unanswered. The following morning on the 23rd of April, I woke up at about 6.30 a.m. I put on an earphone and turned on the YouTube Bible app and went back to sleep. At about 8.20 a.m., my two-year-old granddaughter Zoe climbed up my bed. She tucked at my arm saying, Grandpa, Grandpa, wake up. I woke up and I heard these words through my earphone. I will place on his shoulder the key to the house of David. 
What He opens, no one can shut. And what He shuts, no one can open. I was both surprised and amazed by what I just heard. I knew that this statement was the verse in Isaiah 22, 22. I made the connection straight away. And I immediately remember my screenshot the day before. 2.22 p.m. and 22nd April with my granddaughter's photo on it. It is so fascinating that God will use my granddaughter to wake me up at precisely the moment when the Bible app narration was at Isaiah 22, 22. Is all this just a coincidence? Absolutely not. Consider the uncanny coincidences of both the timing and the numbers. I strongly believe that God is speaking to me. There are two coincidences that will blow your mind. First, my wife and I just came back from our vacation to Turkey on the 18th of April. During the trip, we visited the places where the famous seven churches of the book of Revelation were located. Of course, we went to Philadelphia. The church in Philadelphia was one of the only two out of seven churches that did not receive any warning from Jesus in his letters to them. Jesus promised the church in Philadelphia. To the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These are the words of him who is holy and true, who holds the key of David. What he opens, no one can shut, and what he shuts, no one can open. I know your deeds. See, I place before you an open door that no one can shut. I know that you have little strength, yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. Second, during this time when I was in Turkey, Pastor Timothy O'Connor preached at our church service on the 14th of April. In his concluding segment, he spoke about Jesus' letter to the church in Philadelphia and wondered if I visited the seven churches in Turkey. He also alluded to a sermon that he had preached in our church several years ago when he mentioned that Rock of Ages Church was like the church in Philadelphia. The reason he said that was we kept God's word and stood for His truth uncompromisingly. Putting all these various pieces together, it is clear that God is essentially speaking to me prophetically about the key of David and the church in Philadelphia. What is God saying to us prophetically? What are the implications? The first prophetic implication is God will confer upon us the key of David, just as He placed the key to the house of David upon Eliakim's shoulder. Isaiah 22, 20-22 In that day, I will summon my servant Eliakim, son of Hukiah. I will clothe him with your robe and fasten your sash around him and hand your authority over to him. He will be a father to those who live in Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. I will place on his shoulder the key to the house of David. What he opens, no one can shut, and what he shuts, no one can open. In Isaiah's prophecy, Eliakim was appointed as the person in charge of the house of David. In other words, he would assume the position of the second in command in the kingdom of Judah, just as Joseph was to Pharaoh. The phrases, key to the house of David, and opens and no one can shut, and what he shuts and no one can open, speak of Eliakim's power and authority. He would be an influential figure in the kingdom. The only other place in the Bible where the key of David is mentioned is in Jesus' letter to the church in Philadelphia. We read in the letter that Jesus now holds the key of David. What he opens, no one can shut, and what he shuts, no one can open. Jesus also placed before the church in Philadelphia an open door that no one can shut. The prophetic significance for us is clear. God is giving to us the key of David. He's resting upon us in Rock of Ages Church 
His kingdom power, authority, and influence. This is a tremendous promise. We can certainly expect a greater anointing to come upon our church in the days ahead. At the same time, we must also be aware that a greater anointing means a greater responsibility. By faith, I'm expecting us to preach the gospel, present truths, and minister with greater power and authority. We will also be given greater influence and opportunities in our calling as the watchmen on the wall and the preparers of the way for Christ's return. I often say that the days ahead are going to be dark and dystopian. Those who are awakened to the current eschatological realities are often anxious and sometimes fearful of the coming upheavers. So, I'm thankful to God for His promise of the key of David and the anointing of power, authority, and influence. We can look to the days ahead with greater confidence. Praise the Lord! The second prophetic implication is God will keep us from the hour of trial that is coming upon the whole world. Revelation chapter 3, verse 10 Since you have kept my command to endure patiently, I will also keep you from the hour of trial that is going to come upon the whole world to test those who live on the earth. The hour of trial that is going to come upon the whole world refers to the seven-year tribulation in the context of the book of Revelation. Besides, the only other time when a catastrophe of this magnitude happened was during Noah's days when God sent a global flood. No other events in human history have affected the whole world, not even World War I and World War II. The next event that will affect the whole world is the tribulation. I've often said that one of my primary missions is to prepare our church to get everyone across the finish line and be raptured. This is the privilege promised to the church in Philadelphia. Clearly, this is a prophetic promise to believers in the terminal generation. I'm so glad that we have been counted as the church of Philadelphia by God. Bear in mind that there are conditions. The first condition is keeping the word of God, that is, obey God and His word. The second condition is to endure patiently. Our church has been preaching the truth of God's word uncompromisingly. We stand on truth in a world of lies, half-truths and deceptions. Let us continue to press on with the same unwavering conviction. Thank God for this fascinating prophecy and powerful promise.